And to do that, it's going to come from only one part of that budget that we just listed. And it's the hardest part, and that's why most people can't do it, but this is why you will. When I was making minimum wage, I was able to save about 50% of my income. And right now I'm making a little bit more than minimum wage, and I'm still able to save a crazy amount based off of these techniques and this budget that I'm going to share with you right now. I'm Nolan Gobea. My students know me as Professor G. I'm an actual university professor and I decided to make this channel to help reach more people worldwide and to teach what more schools should be teaching you or should have taught you for personal finance. Let's build that budget. So step one before anything else can get done needs to be what is your why? Why are you doing this? Much like training for a big boxing match or maybe a marathon run, if your why is weak, it's not gonna happen. You're cool with waking up at 5 a.m. for that first week, but by week two, sleep sounds real nice. Unless your why is bigger than sleep. Think about your family or your future family. Think about your future self. Where do you wanna be in five to 10 years? If you truly wanna be able to go on a three-week vacation to Europe or be able to send your kid to college or be in a position to help your parents or friends financially through a medical emergency, you need to visualize this specific why, this specific goal, and not only visualize it, but write it down. And I want you to write it down at the top of this budget sheet that you're making right now. Completing a physical task is tough, but it's even more tough to retrain your mind from years of spending habits or possibly learn traits from parents or friends. Trust me and don't skip this step. There's a reason why this is likely not your first time watching a budget video, and that's because budgeting is tough, but it's also probably because you didn't complete that first step. Now before I jump on to step number two and get us started and step by step actually build this budget out, I'm super excited because today on this video I'm collaborating with Justine Nelson of Debt Free Millennials. She's one of the OGs on YouTube in the budget space. Each month she goes over budget updates so you can see live in real time how her budget changes and morphs through the different stages of her life. Like specifically when she had a baby, and recently she's been going through the process of buying a house. The reason why I originally reached out to her and wanted to work with her is because she actually walked the walk. She paid off $35,000 worth of student loans while making less than $40,000 a year, and she paid off those loans in two and a half years. We decided to make a video on the exact same topic, so I'm gonna link her video down below in my description so you can go watch that after you finish watching mine. Now that we have a solid why in place, we can get to work. But what do we work on? Anthony O'Neill, who used to work with Dave Ramsey, said it best. You see, where there is no vision, Abe, that's where people perish. And I believe it's the same thing for our money. Where there is no vision for our money, written down on paper, where there is no budget, that's where our money perishes. He's saying that you need a plan, a written plan. You don't know what you're spending it on. So before you spend your money uh, physically, you need to spend it on paper with a purpose. And before we can build out a great plan, we have to figure out where we are and what that problem is. Now, I know this is where you just stop the video and say no, because you think that I'm gonna tell you to just stop spending all your money on those lattes or bobas. But that actually may not be the big problem. All right, so to start step two out, we have to figure out what type of money we're talking about and what money's coming in. So you need to list out all of your income. That means money from your paycheck coming in, that could be money from a side hustle, literally anything, anytime that you make money, what is it per month that you make on average? Now that we have the income listed, we need to figure out your absolute needs, the total non-negotiables, things that are fixed costs, that it's the same or very close to the same every single month, no matter what. That would be things like mortgage or rent, insurance, cell phones, internet, car loans, credit cards, utilities. List all of those out and list out what it is per month. Next is to figure out and list out other non-negotiable needs, but these might be variable. They might be things that one month you spend $80, but another month you spend $150 on. They're still very, very important needs, but maybe the price changes. These would be things like groceries, gas, maybe dog or cat care. The way that I suggest that you find these numbers for this step and also for the one coming up 
is to look back in your bank statement for the last three months or so. If you have even further than that, then great. So do the last six months. Figure out how much you spent in groceries each month. If you spent $300 this month and $500 this month, if you average those two out, you'd get $400. So try to find the average of what you spend on these types of things and put that in for this number for right now. So now that we have the needs columns pretty much filled out with pretty good idea of numbers, now we need to figure out the wants column of your expenses. So now look back in those bank statements again and I want you to list out every single expense that you made that wasn't one of those needs. That could be things like going out to coffee or going out to dinner or buying clothes or going to the movies. Just things that are usually fun and add to your life, but they're not necessarily a need for you to survive. After you've written all of those out, what I want you to start doing is categorizing them. Try to put a bunch of them together. So for me, it's things like dining out, coffee could be its own one, possibly clothes shopping, gifts. Just start bundling all those together and try to find a good average amount that you're spending each month and throw that in for the wants category. So at this point, all we've done is we're writing out what's actually happening. We're not writing out what we want to happen or what should happen. We're writing down the average of how much we're spending on things as it's shown to us in our bank statement. So you add up your whole needs category, see what that comes out to, add up the whole wants category, see what that comes out to, and see what the difference is between the income that's coming in and your total expenses. So now if you added everything up and you saw that your expenses are higher than your income, then you know you have a problem. But I'm sure you already knew you had a problem if that's the case. If though you add them up and you see that they're about the same, that's still kind of a problem, but maybe you didn't really know that. Now we go back to the top of your sheet and to step number one to see what is your why. What's the goal? Why are we doing this? This why should be enough to put off a few wants and delay the gratification of spending to go hard and smash that goal. And to do that, it's gonna come from only one part of that budget that we just listed. And it's the hardest part, and that's why most people can't do it, but this is why you will. You likely can't increase your income right now, and you definitely can't just go to your landlord and say, can I just pay you less rent instead? So you have to pull from the category of want. This isn't super fun, but at the end of this, I'm gonna show you how the real magic is not just in building this budget, and getting out of debt or whatever your main goal is for now, it's gonna to be to be able to do this exact same thing and make millions of dollars without doing much else. It doesn't take a lot of money, so wait till the end for that. So now as far as trimming those wants, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. And the type of mindset that I want you to have when doing this trimming around those categories is something that you can sustain. If you absolutely love coffee, and I just tell you, you can't buy coffee anymore, you maybe will be able to do that for about a month, and then you're just gonna say, never mind, I just want the coffee, man. And I totally get that. That's why a bunch of diets fail as well. People go way too hard when they've been eating like trash for 30 years, and then they just go, I'm only gonna have salads for the next year. That ain't happening, bro. So I don't want you to just go straight to salads. I just want you to take a little rice off the plate, brother. So with this trimming, if you have five categories spending every single month, if you were to just take $20 off of each of those categories, you've now freed up a free $100. That $100 can now go towards whatever your goal is, whatever your why is. Pay off that credit card, save, whatever that may be. The way that I like to trim up that want category is to prioritize what I'm seeing there. I really like going out to dinner or spending money on hanging out with friends. And I'm totally cool with totally cutting out things like clothes shopping, or for me personally, getting coffee out. So if there's one of those categories that you can totally cut out, that's gonna be a big chunk of money that you can now throw at your why. What I want you to do is challenge yourself to go after that why and work hard for the next 90 days, that's three months. And I want you to trim up those wants. And I'm sure by the end of those three months, you're gonna be in such a nice place. 
Now, like I promised before, the real magic is not necessarily in this time here where we're going after that why and we're paying down that debt or saving for whatever it is that you're saving for. It's what we do right after that, right as we're hitting our goal and after. Because now you've hit your goal, you've paid off whatever it is that you needed to pay off, but now you have extra money every single month. You just proved that you could live and do it. So let's use that extra money and in this video that I made, I show how you can become a millionaire with very little amount of money. It just takes consistency, so watch it now.